Hello guys, in our last class, we talked about the gluteal region and we explained the gluteal region. We talk about the buttocks, we talk about the, the hip, and we talk about the bones of the gluteal region. We are still on overview. Remember that everything about this class is for this chapter is on what? On overview. We're going to talk about the regions bit on their own as topic by topic, but now we're just running through what? Overview. In this class now, let's now talk about the tie or the what? The femoral region, and that will be our lesson two. So let's now talk about the tie. What are the bits? A complete series of classes in anatomy, all of them, physiology, all the physiology, biochemistry, all. They are available in the LearnLift app. So just head down to Play Store or App Store and type LearnLift, right? And then download the app and you have access to all your classes and the continuation of this lesson you are watching right now. For the now, peace out. Now, take note that the tie has boundaries. We can see that the tie is demarcated proximally and distally. Now, what's the, 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 the proximal demarcation of the tie? And what's the distal demarcation of the tie? Now, take note that proximally, the tie is bounded by the gluteal region, the abdominal region, and the perineal world region. We're going to talk about that. Take note that proximally, the tie is bounded by the what? By the gluteal region. Abdominal region and what peroneal what region. When we talk about proximally, we are talking about above the thigh, right? Now, what about this study? This study, the thigh is bounded by the what? By the knee joint. Now, let's now look at the diagram. All lies on the diagram. This part you are seeing, this line, this imaginary line, is what we call the what? The groin. It is called a groin. Or you call it the word the iguinal ligament. The groin or the iguinal lig ligament is the landmark. Are you seeing that? And this part is what we call the word the knee. So this is the groin and this is the knee. So between the groin and the knee is where we have the word the tie. So above the groin is where we have the word the abdominal region. If you pass the groin, you are going to see the abdominal region. Posteriorly, you are going to see the word the gluteal region as well as the word the peroneal. We'll talk about the peroneal region. This is the region that has the word the reproductive word vessels. Are you seeing that? So take note that the tie lies between the word the knee and we can see above after the word the guinea word ligament. Because after the guinea ligament, which is the groin ligament, that's when you're going to see the word the gluteal region, the abdomen, and the word the perineum. So that's where but that's the tie. So this is the word the knee region. So the boundary of the tie is simply the region above the word the guinea ligament, also called the groin. And that's why we have the word the gluteal, the abdominal region, the gluteal region, as well as the word peroneal word region. Now let's look at more diagrams. Look at the tie. You can see this is what we call the word the gluteal region, right? And this is what we call the word the abdominal region. So this is the iguinal ligament. Are you seeing that? And this is what we call the knee region. So between this iguinal ligament and this knee region, between this part, this side is what we call the word the tie. Do you understand that? So the tie lies between the words, we can say between the knee region and the iguinal ligament, or you say between above the, so above the iguinal ligament is where we have the word the abdomen, why posteriorly we have the word the gritty. Do you understand that? And this is the word the knee joint. Now, if you say you understand that, still on the tie, take note that the junction between the abdomen and the tie is what we call the iguinal ligament, also called the word the groin. That region is called the iguinal region. Have you seen that? So, the junction between the abdomen and the tie is called the word the iguinal region, also called the word the groin. Are you seeing that? And also take note that the lower part of the back of the tie is called the word the arm. From there, that's what we're going to talk about the hamstring muscles. Are you seeing that? We're going to talk about the hamstring muscles as we move forward. But take note, everybody, what's the junction between the abdomen and the tie? What is it called? It's called the word the iguinal region or the groin. And we said the lower part of the back of the tie is what we call the word the arm. Now let's go and see that diagram. First, look at it. This part, this is the abdominal region. This is the tie. This part separating it, we call that part the word the iguinal. Also call it the word the groin. Look at it here, you can also see it here. So, this part, this is the abdomen, 
and this is the tie. So this part separating it is called the what? What do we call it? We say it's called the equinal or ligament. And this is the this is the tie. This posterior aspect of the tie is called the ham. Ham. Now let's look at that. This is what we call the what the iguinal ligament, and this part is what we call the what the ham. So everybody, what is the posterior aspect of the tie called? The posterior aspect of the tie, this posterior, this is the tie, the posterior aspect of it. We can say, either you say the posterior aspect of it or you say the uh, inferior part of the posterior aspect of the tie that's below, just a bit before the knee joint. This posterior aspect of the tie is called the word arm. And those muscles, they are called the armstring muscles. What are they called? They are called the word the armstring muscles. Now, what is now the bone of the tie? The major bone of the tie is called the femur. So take note that the bone of the tie is called the femur. That is the major bone. That is the only bone in the world in the tie. And this bone of the tie has articulation. It has art articulation superiorly and it has articulation what inferior. Now, what is the articulation superiorly? Take note that superiorly, the femur binds with the hip bone to form what we call the word the hip joint. Superiorly, the femur, the head of the femur fits into the acetabulum and the joint is formed. That joint is what we call the word the hip joint. So superiorly, the femur articulates with the word with the hip bone to form what we call the word the hip joint. Now, inferiorly, take note that the femur articulates with the upper end of the tibia and the patella to form what we call the word the knee joint. Superiorly, we said it articulates with the hip bone to form what we call the hip joint and inferiorly, it articulates with what we call the word the tibia and the patella to form what we call the word the knee joint. Now, we're going to appreciate the diagram. Do you understand? But take note that superiorly, it forms the word the hip joint and inferiorly it forms the word the knee joint. Now let's look at the diagram. Look at it. Now you can see that this is the femur, right? This bone is called the femur. And as superiorly, this bone is articulating with what? With the bony pelvis, which is the hip bone. Look at it, the head of the word of the femur. And it forms what we call the word the hip joint. So hip. Now, you can see that inferiorly, it is articulating with the what? With the tibia. This is the tibia. This is the tibia bone. And this is the patella. The patella is called the what? A sissimoid bone. So, you can see that this joint is what we call the what? The knee joint. While this joint is what we call the what? The hip joint. So, what are the articulations? Take note that it articulates with the what? The hip bone to form the hip joint. And it articulates with the what with the patella and the tibia, not with the fibula. You're going to see that it articulates with the tibia and the patella to form what we call the word the nichons. Do you understand that? Now, still on that, let's go back to that diagram. Take note that the constant part of fracture of the femur is called the neck of the femur. Everybody, what is the commonest point of fracture of the femur? It's called the neck of femur. And this is the point. We're going to still see that as we travel. Take note that the neck of the femur is the commonest point of what of fracture. Not the head. What do we see? The neck. Now, if you say you understand that, let's now talk about the new region. Now, take note that the new region is from number one by the condyles of the femur and what tibia. We're going to show that in the diagram. Take note that we said that the tibia has superior articulation and inferior articulation. In the inferior articulation, we have the condyles of the femur. We have the medial condyle and we have the lateral condyle. As well as for the tibia, we have the lateral condyle, we have the, the medial condyle. And the second thing that forms it is the word the head of what of fibula. Are you seeing that? The head of fibula and number three, the word the patella, also called the kneecap. Take note that the patella lies in front. Are you seeing that the patella lies in front? And take note that the patella is a sissimoid bone. Please take note about that, that. They ask you what is the sissimoid bone, the biggest sissimoid bone of the right limb. It is the what? It is the patella. Take note that the posterior aspect of the knee represents a well-defined hollow depression known as the what? The popliteal what fossa. Now look at it. At the upper at the upper limb, this is the elbow joint. Anterior to the elbow joint is what we call the word the cubital fossa, this depression here, as well as the knee joint. The knee joint in the lower limb, posterior to the knee joint, is a depression. That depression is called the word your popliteal fossa. Your popliteal fossa is a diamond shape or depression. We're going to talk about that when we get to what? 
to your time. Are you seeing that? So is it that much shape or depression? Everybody what form the knee joint. The knee joint is formed by the condyles of the femur and the tibia, the head of the fibula, as well as the what? The patella, which is the what? The kneecap. I would say that the sesamoid bone, the biggest simoid bone of the lower limb is called the what? The patella. Are you seeing that? Now, let's get to the diagram now. Let's appreciate that. Look at it now. Very quickly, when it comes to creating accounts, how do you create an account? Very easy. Let me give you the steps. First and foremost, you see create account and login. You only log in right when you already have an account. Since you don't have an account, click, click on create account. When you get there, put in your phone number. Put in your phone number. After putting in your phone number, you click on continue, right? Your first name, of course, you put in your first name there. If your first name is James, you put in James as your first name. Your last name, if your last name is Victor, you put in what? Victor as your last name. Then you come to email address, right? Put in your email address there very quickly. James112 at gmail.com at gmail.com Then your password, right? Oh yes. Those of you that like, if you want to use your name, your password can just be like six digits, right? Oh yes. So let me say James 12th. James 12th as the password, right? Fill everything accurately and correctly. James 12th. Don't jump any stage. If not, your account is not going to open for you. Select education. Under select education, of course, university. You click university. Leave secondary, primary. Leave the others. Click university or tertiary. Click it. Come to select level. Under select level, you go and select your level. If it's 100 level, 200 level, of course, all these are the university classes. Click on 200 level and click on create account. Once you click on create account, what will happen? Your class will load straight and then your profile will be set up and then it will take you towards to class. Easy and direct. So you see it. This is how you create your account. And then from here... You can see that you have your anatomy here, your upper limb, your lower limb, separately embryology, histology, systemic anatomy. Those ones are for nursing. Your CVS, cardiovascular system, your blood physiology, excitable tissues, systemic physiology, intro to biochemistry, your bowel molecules, BCM for nursing, nursing psychology. You have access to every single Latin in the app. Now, let me see what is in the app. Let's say, for example, upper limb. You click on the upper limb, right? You can see that you have your classes there already waiting for you. Overview of the upper limb, pectoral region, arm region, forearm, hand, all of them part by part. When I click on the overview of the upper limb, of course, I'll just match it straight to my class. Parts of the upper limb, one part of the upper limb, two bone of, bones of the upper limb, joints of the upper limb, muscles. You see, all your classes are there for you, right? Okay, let me say I want to start now and then I want to watch joints of the upper limb. All you just need to do is click on that particular class that you want to watch, joints of the upper limb, and what will happen? Your class will load, and your classes will start playing for you immediately. Sure, you see, you may choose to say, okay, I want to rotate it, right? Oh, yes, rotate it, and you start following your classes immediately, easy and direct. You may choose to say, okay, you want to forward, you want to pause, you want to back, um, back forward, anyone you want to do out you take it forward and what happened you can see all of them very very easy and the sweet part is that there are questions for you at the end of every class are you with me so that's for that and you may choose to go back and then go to the notes section of the app oh yes when you get to the notes section of the app of course the notes are there well organized and arranged for you and you can zoom in and then start following back to back and you are following you may even choose to go and start answering questions. Questions are there for you and there are answers. You start um, following through every singular facet of it and you are learning on your own. And there is CPT in the app as well for you. A lot of other aspects that you can follow up. All of this in the LearnLift app. Same way you have for anatomy. That's how you have for physiology. That's how you have for biochemistry. Are you getting it now? For the now, bye-bye. All eyes on the diagram. First, this is the femur. Now, the femur has two condyles. The femur also called the thigh bone. One, we have what we call the lateral condyle, and two, we have what we call the word the medial condyle. Have you seen that? And you can see this bone on top is what we call the what the patellar bone. Right? 
Now, let's now come. This is uh, superior. Let's now come inferior. This is what we call the word the tibia or the word the shin bone. So let's call it number four. And you can also see the word the fibula. Now, can you observe that the fibula does not have a direct attachment to the tibia? So if they ask you what forms the knee joint, we can't say fibula. Fibula does not have a direct attachment to the word to the knee joint. I just seen that, but it forms around what that region. So everybody, what forms the knee joint? Number one, we have the femur. What aspect of the femur? The lateral condyle and the what the medial condyle. Now the head of the tibia. What part of the head of the tibia? The lateral condyle and the what the medial condyle, as well as the what the patellar bone. So three major bones we can see there. Number one, the femur. What aspect of the femur? Lateral condyle, medial condyle, right? What aspect of the the, the femur? The lower femur or the distal femur which has the word the lateral condyle and the medial condyle. Now, the tibia bone, what aspect of the tibia? The head of the tibia. What are the aspects? The lateral condyle and the word medial condyle of the word of the tibia. Do you understand? Don't forget the things that form the word the new region. We're still going to take uh, more as we teach on. This is just the words the overview. Now, we said that at the posterior aspect of the knee joint is a depression. That depression is what you call your word, your popliteal fossa. This is what you call your popliteal fossa. You can see that, right? Popliteal word fossa. So this is what we call the word popliteal fossa. I told you it's a diamond shaped depression. We want to talk about that. That's what we call the word the popliteal word fossa. Everybody, what's that depression found at the posterior aspect of the knee? It's called your popliteal fossa. Now I want to catch something that we're following. I told you this was this lower part, lower part of the posterior aspect of the thigh. Who can remember? Yes, we said it's called the word the ham. The posterior aspect of the tie is called the words the ham. So that brings us to everything about the knee. Now go through the notes. Practicity always tell your friend about the word the length class. In the next class, now now go further to talk about the words the leg region. We've talked about the glute region. We have talked about the tie region. We have talked about the knee region. Now go further to talk about the leg region. From the leg region, we'll go to the word to the ankle region. I'll talk about the foot. And that will be our lesson today. But for now, peace out. Hope you've enjoyed this class. Guess what? To follow up for more classes, just download the LearnLift app, whether on Play Store or App Store, and then follow up your classes. You must do extremely well. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.